Hi there, my name is Enda, I'm a costume designer and maker and I've been working in costume departments in film, TV and theatre for about the last 20 years. I've worked on different shows like Game of Thrones, His Dark Materials, on films like Pirates of the Caribbean, um, The Golden Compass, um, Your Highness, just to name a few. And recently I just won an award for one of my costume designs for a streetcar named Desire at the Lyric Theatre in Belfast. I teach workshops at the Marketplace Theatre in Armagh and hopefully we'll be doing some in the next few months. Um, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a leather cicadia beetle that I've created. So I've made this using leather and wire, wire to create the legs and leather for the body. So we'll be learning a lot of different techniques today uh, to do with leather work and like hand tooling leather and dyeing it and also um, techniques such as gold leafing and foiling. So I hope you enjoy this video and hopefully you'll be inspired to come along to one of the workshops. So stay tuned and enjoy. So here lined up we have all of the different segments of the insect. So we have the main part of the body, the abdomen, and then these are all the sectional plates that are going to create the different textures within the insect. This is the wing, so we've created just a little cardboard template to start with. So if you imagine that the little sections of the body are going to stack one over the other. So we start with our first one and then our tail section. And these can be cut in different leathers with different textures to give us different kind of effects on the body. So then we stack up our little leather profiles which will all create the sort of segmented body of the cicadia insect and then we finish off with our top section now can you imagine that these are going to be cut in thicknesses of leather that will help create um, the sort of nice curvature of the back of the insect as well it's not very well done but you can imagine the effect and then our little wings are going to be attached onto the corners there so we'll make two of those so we're going to cut these out of different types of leather so here's a piece i've cut earlier for the main part of the body which is this uh, 1.5 millimeter leather it's tooling leather which you can buy online i bought a piece quite a large piece of this and it cost about seven pounds and um, so it was probably about 30 inches long by seven or eight inches wide so I've marked out both of my wings here and I'm just going to cut those now. So I'm just using a scissors to cut these wings. Um, I'm finding that it's the easiest thing to cut. You get a really nice clean cut with it. You can use a scalpel or a Stanley knife, but I find that it's easier to control the scissors. And if they're a relatively sharp pair, then you get a nice clean line. Otherwise, sometimes you're having to do multiple cuts with a knife and it can sometimes give you an uneven edge. If you are going to use a knife, I would use a fresh blade um, every 20 cuts or so, or try and sharpen your blade somehow. Uh, so I'll just cut that one out. And then you can see here, that's my finished wing. Here we have the two wings cut out. I finished cutting the second wing and here's the body. So we're gonna dye all of these now. Um, but first of all, I kind of felt like maybe it would be nice to have a little bit of texture around the edges of the wing. So I'm going to use a sharp scalpel. Now you could use a craft knife or you can use a Stanley blade to do this. But I'm going to add a little bit of a kind of serrated edge onto the edge of the wing. So just taking the scalpel at a slight angle and just roughly scoring it to give it a little bit of texture. This will help to kind of soften the edge of the wing and I think just make it look a little bit more delicate because we're kind of wanting that nice kind of light feeling to the edge of the wing. So I've done the other one. So that's really enough. Just you're not wanting to cut the whole way through. You're just wanting to, to slice the top edge of the leather. Next, I'm going to use this dye, which is an alcohol based leather dye. It's made by a company called Feebings and roughly a litre of that costs about 32 pounds. It's very strong. It's kind of hard to control the color. So if you're going for basic colors, this is quite good. But if you're wanting to mix your own personal colors, I think sometimes that can be quite difficult. So I'm just going to use a big brush 
and I'm just going to paint the dye directly on. I've gone for a dark brown on this. Now the other leather I'm going to use is already dyed black. But I quite fancy mixing up a bit of black and brown and using a bit of bronze kind of effect and gold. I think so it'll all be quite tonal and quite natural. And hopefully the other leather we're going to use the suede and the leather side of it to create different textures within the body of the insect. So these will be the wings. They'll be mainly foiled and then the body will have a little bit of foiling on it but will be remain mainly black I think just to to be quite a nice contrast. So I'm just marking all of the body templates out now on the leather. So here's my last one. I've la laid all the other ones out and marked them. I'm just using them a uh, black pen to work around the edges. I don't want it to be too visible um, so you don't really see it that much on the black leather but if I hold it up to the light then you can see that it's just about visible enough under the light to work with. So I've marked out all the rest of the body panels that I have there. The one that we dyed just a minute ago, just when it's ready to handle if you curve it a little bit along the length like that then that will help the body to sit quite nicely so we're going to let that completely dry out and that will give us a nice shape to the insect which will give it a nice kind of three-dimensional quality but if you handle it while it's still a little bit damp then you should be able to get like a nice kind of profile in it that will actually dry out in that shape so i'll leave that to the side now and then i'm just going to cut all of these same process again, just cutting out using scissors. Again, you can use a scalpel or a Stanley knife if you want. But as I was saying earlier on, I think it's kind of easier to get a nice clean effect with a good sharp pair of scissors. Now, obviously, if you've got a very, very thick leather, you're probably going to want to use a knife or a scalpel because it'll be much too hard to cut with a pair of scissors. The good thing about marking it on the leather side is then it's easier to see than on the suede side but also then we can decide as we're layering up the body which way around we want our material to be so at least we're not tied into um, sticking to one side or the other at the moment. I've laid out all my body segments here I've cut them all out and so if we have this one as our leather side so that's number one lay that down then we'll get number two which is the bottom part of the tail that's what i'm going to call it number three i think should be the leather side so number number two is the suede side number three is leather number four is suede again number five which is the head is suede and then number six which is sort of main chunk of the body is leather. So you can kind of see the effect that we're getting here. So we're getting a bit of play of light and a bit of play on textures as well. I found these nice um, bronzy beads which will work really nicely with the colour scheme of the insect. So I've got a piece of brass wire. I've already used this so I've had to unravel it. Due to lockdown I've kind of run out of materials. So we're just using leftover bits of pieces of things. So I'm going to thread that on to the piece of wire. And then I'm going to twist the wire. I'm going to fold it and twist like so. And then once it gets to a certain stage, you probably need to use a pliers. So just twisting that so that the eye is quite secure at the end of the stalk. So I've added one onto the other side as well and then what I'll do is just bring those together. So this can be securely mounted in between the layers of leather as we're constructing the whole piece and we can move them out to whatever distance they need to be. So I'm going to start assembling my body now. I have applied the glue to all the relevant surfaces. So I just placed the eyes in place here 
and then we're going to add the headpiece over the top in suede so just make sure that your glue is nice and dry or a little bit tacky is fine as long as it's not very wet and then we just continue with the rest of the sections of the body I'm going to have to add a little bit more glue in patches just as the areas of leather start to layer up So I've just added the final section to the body on there and you can see how it's catching the light differently. You're seeing the different textures of the suede and the leather and it's giving quite a nice effect. So our next step will actually be to start applying the foil and the gold leaf to it. So we have our gold size here. Now you can use, if you don't have that, you can use PVA or another type of glue. You don't have to use this stuff, but I just had some in my kit, so I thought I would use this. So I'm just going to start painting on the areas that I want to highlight using the foil. So I'm just using a very cheap brush like this. It's got very plasticky bristles, which are quite good in this case because they're quite resistant. They don't bend easily, so you can get quite a crisp line. Not very good for painting generally, but quite good for this job. So I'm going to start applying some of the detail so just some ridge ridges and then we want to break away from that with a kind of a broken kind of feathered line do a little bit at the top of the abdomen and then we'll maybe do some nice detail down here, some curved lines, some kind of splodgy lines. Just trying to give it a natural kind of appearance to it. Nothing is symmetrical or perfect, so it's it's a good place to start breaking it up in that part of the body. And then some curved lines. And then we'll maybe do a little bit over the suede part of the abdomen. And then some more broken lines. And then just a nice little bit right at the bottom. So the next step is going to be using our bronze foil for doing a base layer of metallic on our cicadia body. So you can get this from screen printing suppliers, it's quite cheap um, and it will give us a nice kind of shine as a base and then we can go over the top with some gold. So our glue or our size is pretty much dry already. Generally with this you're supposed to use a foil adhesive glue and you either screen print it or paint it on and then you're supposed to use heat, you're supposed to use an iron really too. Uh, iron over the top you, with them um, some material in between but in this case this is very very sticky we don't really need the heat so we're just going to place this over the top so it is the coloured side of the silver on the back and then we're going to just give that a good rub like so and get it into all the nice crevices and then hopefully it will be foiled. Let's give it another if it feels like there's a bit of resistance give it another little bit of rub. So we start peeling it back gently. Yeah, so that's quite a nice base layer of metallic on there. So we can go over the top with some gold now. So generally what you do with gold leaf is you apply it over the top and then you brush from behind. But with this, because it's quite a small little area, we can actually 
cheat slightly and just place them right over the top like so and push them down so we're actually saving a bit of on gold leaf so we'll give that a good press down and then I'm going to grab a large um, fairly stiff bristle brush what I might do even to save a little bit further on gold leaf is chop all around that because we don't want to waste this whole sheet and then we can flip that over and just rub the wings from the top side through the paper and get a really good coverage on there and then when we peel away we've got our golden wings so next we start brushing you have to be quite vigorous with this and you can see all the areas where there is no gold leaf it starts to brush away so it's quite a beautiful effect very graphic kind of feel to it and I think it's kind of nice that the the wings really shine out on the insect that they're the, the most obvious thing that you see first of all because the wings of a cicadia are very very strong and graphic looking so we'll do both wings and you can see where we've feathered into the edge here it's got a nice kind of softness to it So I'm about to cover the legs now in some thread. So I've taken this thread, it's just a regular sewing thread. You can use a buttonhole thread which would be thicker, um, but in this case I only have this at hand so I'm going to use this. So I've actually double threaded my needle. So I've actually got four strand, strands of thread in there now at the moment. So it'll be much easier to build up the thickness of the leg using the thread. So I'm just going to start off my stitch in the middle of my piece of wire. So I'm just going to loop it around and catch my thread. Like so. And then all, all I'm going to do is just twist right the way to the end. So we're just wanting to cover the wire. I'm not paying too much attention to whether or not it completely covers it because a little bit of the brass is quite nice showing through. We don't want huge amounts of it, but a little bit is fine. Once we get to the top, wind it a couple of times, and then we go through that little loop at the top. A couple of times. Like so. And then we just simply go back on ourselves. So we're just going to wind it back the other direction. And then we just cut that off and tie it off. So here we have the finished item. I have glued the wings on and just held them in place nice and firmly to allow those to dry. If you wanted to, you could punch a few holes through the tops of the wings the whole way through the body using one of those uh, rotary hole punches and then you could stitch through maybe three or four stitches per hole on both wings if you were really wanting those to be properly solid on there I mean they're fine with the contact adhesive they should hold quite nicely otherwise you could use a small rivet and punch a hole and then tap the rivet through and to secure it in place that would be quite nice because if you used a metallic rivet it would just go with the look of the piece I hope to be running this course and some other courses in the Marketplace Theatre in Armagh in the next few months, hopefully, all going well. And I hope that we get the chance to make these in person. And um, thanks very much for watching this video and hopefully it will inspire you to make something like this for yourself. And yeah, hopefully we can practice some of these techniques in one of my workshops in the future.